Allez, reculez les enfants. On April 9, 2015, a powerful EF4 tornado hit Fairdale, Illinois. This tornado was part of a bigger storm that also affected areas in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. A local man named Clem Schultz took a frightening video of the tornado as it came toward and hit his home. He went upstairs to get lanterns and ended up filming the tornado, which showed exactly how scary the situation was. This video perfectly shows that if you see a tornado and it doesn't seem to be moving left or right, it's coming straight at you. The tornado caused a lot of damage, and it took the community a long time to rebuild. Mount Elbrus, standing at 18,500 feet above sea level, is not only the highest peak in Russia, but also the tallest volcano in all of Europe. It is located in the southern Russian Republic of Kabardino avalanches. Dublin, a notable suburb in the northwest corner of Columbus, Ohio, is famous for hosting the annual Dublin Irish Festival, which claims to be the world's largest celebration of Irish culture. Just two months after the 2011 festival, another significant event drew the community together. The Million Gallon Post Road Water Tower, a landmark since 1982 and a symbol of Dublin, was set for demolition. On September 26, 2011, a small crowd gathered to bid farewell to the old Post Road Tower as it was taken down, marking the end of an era for the local community. Yeah, 
Six years after the first tower was built, Dublin added another two million gallon water tower on Avery Road. These towers provided the city with water for nearly 30 years. As Dublin continued to grow, there was a need for an even bigger water system. The city constructed another two million gallon tank close by, and the older one was no longer needed. After the tower was taken down, demolition teams spent five days cutting it into smaller parts. These parts were then taken to a nearby steel scrapyard, where they were probably recycled into new materials. Nature is as beautiful as it is terrifying and destructive, a fact that has become quite clear. Tornadoes are one example that, despite their danger, often leave people in awe. On January 11, 2020, security cameras at North Central High School in Kershaw County recorded a tornado striking the building. It caused extensive damage within minutes. Luckily, it happened when no one was around, so there were no injuries. The footage shows the front desk and hallway, giving a clear view of the devastation. One office was completely ruined as the tornado tore off its roof, shattered windows, and destroyed furniture. But that wasn't all. The tornado continued through the school, tearing down posters, ripping sheets off the walls, and wrecking much of the infrastructure, leaving the entire place in ruins. The school superintendent estimated that the tornado impacted up to 75% of the school, making it a real tragedy. Fortunately, the community quickly came together to start rebuilding. As of March 2022, construction is still ongoing, and there's no definite completion date yet. Despite the difficulties, it's a relief that no one was injured in this rare event. Heavy snow and steep mountains are ideal for winter sports, but can also create the risk of dangerous avalanches. To manage this risk, mountain regions around the world sometimes trigger controlled avalanches. In Utah, this task is undertaken by the Department of Transportation. On March 27, 2023, they closed a road in Deer Creek to initiate an artificial avalanche. A highway patrol officer parked nearby captured the event on his dash cam. The scene begins with a quiet mountain road, peaceful and serene. Suddenly, an avalanche thunders down the mountain, sweeping over the road and sending a massive cloud of white snow towards the officer's cruiser. Fortunately, it was only a light dusting of snow that reached the cruiser. These controlled avalanches are triggered to prevent random, more dangerous ones, especially likely when a fresh layer of heavy snow falls on a weaker layer. This weak layer often forms when sunlight melts the snow during the day and cold temperatures at night refreeze it into ice. This process creates multiple icy layers over the snowpack, and even a slight disturbance can cause these layers to break and slide down the mountain. Yibin, a city in the southern part of Sichuan Province, China, experienced a shocking event late on the night of October 20th, 2020. A massive sinkhole opened up next to a road near a shopping mall, swallowing 21 parked cars. Thankfully, there were no injuries reported. The area has been facing heavy rainfall since August 18th, which likely contributed to the formation of the sinkhole. A significant cliff collapse recently took place in the maritime area of St. Juan Bruneval, causing around 30,000 tons of rocks to suddenly fall onto the beach. This event has worsened existing erosion problems in the area. Currently, the exact cause of the cliff's collapse remains unclear. Built in 1967, the Mirandi Bridge was a vital link connecting the mountainous seaside city of Genoa with the rest of Italy and neighboring France. It towered 45 meters over the city and stretched across 1.1 kilometers. In 2018, during heavy rain, a 210-meter section of the bridge tragically collapsed due to poor maintenance, which led to the corrosion and snapping of cables. This collapse resulted in the deaths of 43 people, with dozens of vehicles caught in the disaster. 
The effort to reach survivors was immense as they were trapped under thousands of tons of concrete in a residential area. This incident was the 12th bridge collapse in Italy since 2004, sparking widespread concern over the safety of the nation's infrastructure. Following the disaster, the remnants of the Ponte Morandi stood as a grim reminder of the tragedy until 2019, when it was finally brought down in a controlled demolition. Residents were evacuated, and water was sprayed to control the dust from the blast. With a loud explosion, the landmark was cleared, leaving Genoa's skyline free from the reminder of the dark day. The regional president of Liguria described the demolition as symbolic, marking a move towards the future for Genoa, away from the shadows of the August 14th tragedy. Diadema is a city in Sao Paulo, Brazil, packed with about 500,000 people living in an area of just 12 square miles. To give you an idea, that's like squeezing the population of Atlanta, Georgia, into the space of Lowell, Massachusetts. This dense population makes any demolition job critical because mistakes can lead to serious consequences. On August 23, 2020, technicians were tasked with demolishing an old concrete water tower in Geodema. Unfortunately, the demolition didn't go as planned. Thankfully, no one was injured when the structure unexpectedly began to roll. Imagine you're standing at a routine demolition, expecting nothing out of the ordinary, when suddenly you find yourself sprinting for safety as a water tower begins to roll, kicking up a massive cloud of dust. The chaotic scene also leaves nearby parked cars damaged. Brazilian officials later revealed that there was a problem with the demolition team's paperwork. They weren't officially cleared to work on the tower, but went ahead with the demolition anyway. The full details of what went wrong are still not completely clear. A woman living across the street captured the moment on video, noting that the demolition team didn't stop or redirect traffic before starting their work. Luckily, no vehicles or pedestrians were in the path of the falling tower, which helped prevent any any injuries or worse outcomes. California, typically known for its dry climate, faces yearly wildfires due to low rainfall. However, in 2017, the state experienced a drastic change. Torrential storms brought California its wettest winter in nearly a century. North of Sacramento, nestled in the Sierra Nevada mountains foothills, is the Oroville Dam, standing at 770 feet tall, the tallest in the U.S. In 2017, this dam suffered a significant failure, necessitating the evacuation of over 180,000 people downstream along the Feather River. While resembling a natural waterfall in the video, it depicts a man-made disaster caused by the Oroville Dam's failure. The official report indicates that heavy rain prompted dam operators to use the main spillway to lower lake levels. Shortly after, they noticed unusual flow patterns, leading the California Department of Water Resources to close the spillway for assessment. It was discovered that the spillway's concrete structure was severely compromised. With rain continuing, officials faced a tough choice. Reopen the damaged spillway or allow water to exceed the emergency spillway. They cautiously reopened the main spillway at a reduced rate, aiming to control lake levels. However, this decision proved unsuccessful. On February 11, 2017, water overtopped the emergency spillway for the first time in the dam's history. Although the situation was alarming, it could have been far worse. Erosion threatened to breach the concrete weir. If it had collapsed, a 30-foot wall of water could have surged down the Feather River, causing rapid and severe flooding. By November 1, 2018, repairs to the main spillway had been successfully completed, marking a significant effort to restore the Oroville Dam's safety and functionality following the crisis. 
Sometimes, to mitigate the risk of unexpected landslides and rock slides, especially those that pose a threat to safety near highways, rescuers and engineers may use a technique called induced rock sliding. By deliberately triggering a controlled rock slide, they can manage the situation in a controlled environment, reducing the unpredictability and danger of a natural slide. These proactive measures are often taken when large boulders or unstable rock formations threaten to collapse imminently. Because these events are anticipated and managed carefully, they are expected to occur without causing any casualties. The Hard Rock Hotel, known worldwide for its music-themed decor and lively ambience, faced a tragedy on October 12, 2020, when an 18-story building under construction in New Orleans collapsed. Oh my god! This incident resulted in two workers being trapped and affected many others. The collapse was linked to multiple failures by city officials and building contractors, including inadequate design review and approval of structural steel connections, which compromised the building's structural integrity. The disaster deeply impacted the local community, leading to discussions on improving construction safety standards and enforcement. The U.S. 281 Bridge in Texas, built in 1936, was a key route over the Colorado River. As time passed, it became too outdated and narrow for the growing traffic. By 2013, Texas decided to dismantle the bridge to expedite the construction of a new one. At the demolition, explosives on the support beams brought the entire structure down into the Colorado River in one swift action. Yet, the story of the old bridge didn't end there. Over the following days, cranes on barges retrieved the debris from the river. This scrap metal was then given to a local recycling firm, which plans to transform it into art sculptures that the city will display, giving the old bridge a new life in a creative form. Dnipro, Ukraine, is the country's fourth largest city with about a million residents, located around 243 miles southeast of Kyiv. Originally part of the Soviet Union, it became part of independent Ukraine in 1991. In June 1997, a sinkhole disaster struck the city forcing over 3,500 people to evacuate their homes. Military personnel helped residents move their valuables, but homes, schools, and businesses were lost. As the sinkhole grew, buildings collapsed into a 1,500 foot. The disaster was caused by a mix of mudslides, flash flooding, and an underground river. Helicopter footage showed the extensive damage, revealing a once thriving city turned into rubble. The government took emergency action, and even President Leonid Kuchma visited the site. The affected area covered over 140,000 square feet, about the size of three football fields lined up. For years, Detroit, Michigan, was home to one of the most remarkable department stores in the country, JL Hudson's. It started as a small store serving a few hundred customers, but its popularity grew tremendously over time. It eventually became the tallest department store in the world and the second largest in size, only surpassed by Macy's in New York. The building covered over 2.1 million square feet across 32 floors, standing 410 feet tall, an area equivalent to about 49 acres. Inside, it housed more than 200 departments and offered over 600,000 items from 16,000 vendors. At its peak, it employed 12,000 people and served up to 100,000 customers daily, with sales reaching $163 million in 1954, equivalent to $1.28 billion today. However, in the late 1950s and early 1960s, Detroit's population began to decline due to suburban growth and the development of the freeway system. New shopping malls and centers emerged, diverting customers away from Hudson's. The store struggled to adapt and finally closed its doors in 1983 after more than 90 years in operation. On Saturday, October 24, 1998, the iconic building was demolished, setting a Guinness World Record for the tallest building demolished using explosives. Today, a massive $909 million skyscraper is under construction at the site. Monteviso, 
the tallest peak in the Cochin Alps along the Italian-French border, stands at approximately 12,600 feet. This mountain is known for its challenging terrain and steep inclines, which frequently lead to significant rockfalls and landslides. Recently, a tourist managed to capture a rockfall event from a safe distance. The video shows a cloud of dust billowing from the summit of the mountain as rocks tumbled down. Thankfully, the individual filming was far enough away to avoid any danger from the rockfall. Bhagalpur, a city with historical significance in the state of Bihar, India, has once again drawn attention to construction safety concerns in the country. A bridge under construction in the eastern district of Bhagalpur collapsed for the second time within a year. Fortunately, no injuries were reported in the latest collapse. However, at the time of the incident, eight workers were on the bridge, and one guard was reported missing. This event has raised questions about the oversight and safety standards in construction projects in the area. Tohoku is a region in the northeastern part of Honshu, the largest island in Japan. On March 11, 2011, the Great East Japan Earthquake, also known as the 2011 Tohoku Earthquake, struck Japan, devastating Sendai City in Miyagi Prefecture. <laughs> The 9.0 magnitude earthquake triggered a massive tsunami, leading to widespread destruction and significant loss of life. This disaster prompted extensive reconstruction efforts and a renewed focus on disaster preparedness and risk reduction in vulnerable regions. The I-90 Interbelt Bridge in Cleveland, Ohio, which carried Interstate 90 over the Cuyahoga River, faced serious issues by 2009. The aging bridge was under severe stress and could no longer handle the heavy eight-lane traffic, making it unsafe. Originally set for renovation, the plan was abandoned due to the bridge's poor condition, and demolition was chosen instead. July 2014, with the simple press of a button, 180 pounds of explosives targeted at the bridge's foundations effectively brought the entire structure crashing down. Erzincan province is a landlocked region in east-central Turkey, home to about 239,000 people spread across nine administrative districts. This footage is from the Uzumlu district, where a freak flash flood occurred. In the last days of August 2023, torrential rain battered Turkey's eastern provinces, causing rivers to overflow rapidly. The Uzumlu River's bed was quickly overwhelmed, resulting in a tidal wave of water, mud, and debris.
The aftermath of the flash flood in the Azumlu district left a massive puddle of muck, but fortunately, there were no injuries reported. The water mostly stayed within the riverbed. Reports indicate that the Azumlu River was clogged with mud and stones from the heavy rain, forming an artificial dam. This dam eventually gave way under the pressure, causing all the pent-up water to rush through and create the giant wave that hit the bridge. The Himalayas have the tallest peak in the world and stretch across India. It's a huge mountain range, and people living nearby often face challenges. This area is known for its frequent rock falls every year. Rocks and dirt fall onto the roads, which can be really scary. I would make sure to stay 8 kilometers away if I were there. The video taken from above shows the area looking messy after the landslide. It appears the road is blocked, and they are working to clear away the debris from the incident. Windsor is a small town in the middle of Missouri, around 90 minutes southeast of Kansas City. On April 21, 2009, a few people came together to see an old landmark being demolished. They didn't expect to see a mini wave of dirt, or hear one of the most unique sounds imaginable. When the tower hit the ground, you could see a plug shoot off from the top. All the trapped air escaped through the hole, making sounds like low-pitched whale calls. The tower also smashed a small hill when it fell. Pieces of grass flew near the people watching. When the camera zooms in, you can notice bits of dirt stuck to the side of the trailer. Minneapolis is the largest city in Minnesota. On February 23, 2014, an incident occurred at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. The Metrodome, which was known for hosting sports and entertainment events, was undergoing demolition at the time. In the late 20th century, the Rainbow Warrior, operated by Greenpeace, played a crucial role in protests against French nuclear testing in the Pacific. Tragedy struck on July 10, 1985, when French Secret Service agents bombed the ship in Auckland, New Zealand, resulting in the death of Fernando Pereira, a Portuguese-Dutch photographer on board. Initially denied by the French government, the bombing, codenamed Operation Satanic, was later exposed through the arrest and investigation of agents Dominique Prier and Alain Fart in New Zealand. This incident sparked outrage and strained diplomatic relations between New Zealand and France. Despite the agents' initial 10-year prison sentences, international pressures led to their early release to serve time on Hawa Toll, a French military base. Facilitated by the United Nations, this resolution included apologies and compensation to New Zealand and the Pereira family. However, it did little to ease the sense of betrayal felt by many New Zealanders and global observers. The Rainbow Warrior, deemed irreparable after forensic examination, was scuttled in Matori Bay, New Zealand, where it now serves as a dive wreck and fish sanctuary. In the mountainous region of Kohistan, a big and risky rock landslide happened on the road. Many cars had to stop and wait because the cleanup of the rock seemed like it would take a few days. The entire mass of rock broke apart and fell down, looking almost like the end of the world. China is renowned for its rapid infrastructure development. Thus, despite the Zhuanyang Viaduct in Wuhan being only 16 years old, it was already deemed necessary for replacement. This viaduct, spanning an impressive 3.5 kilometers, holds the record for the longest concrete bridge demolished in China. The demolition was particularly challenging, not only because of its length, but also due to its location through a densely populated residential area. Complicating matters further, major gas pipes and power transmission lines ran directly beneath the structure. To mitigate risks, engineers implemented safety measures like covering the bridge piers and surrounding them with water-filled tanks to absorb the shock waves from the explosion and minimize dust dispersion.
On the night of the demolition, these precautions paid off, allowing the viaduct to be safely brought down in a dramatic and controlled manner. The United Arab Emirates is known for its luxurious lifestyle, with extravagant buildings, multi-million dollar apartments, and expensive sports cars. However, even in this land of wealth, companies can face financial difficulties. Projects that were meant to be grand can be left unfinished, appearing like skeletons in an otherwise pristine city. This happened with a building called Mina Plaza. Construction on this massive apartment complex began in 2007, promising luxuries such as a helipad, sunbathing deck, covered spa, swimming pool, and private medical center. Living there would have been a symbol of high status. However, in November 2012, work stopped due to a dispute between the project's owners and builders. They tried to resolve the issue and planned to resume construction in October 2014, but in 2015, the Malaysian construction company pulled out because they were not paid. The building remained half-finished, a rare eyesore in the city's skyline. In 2018, the Prince of Abu Dhabi approved a major regeneration project in the Port Zayed area, which included demolishing Mina Plaza. In November 2020, crowds gathered to watch as explosions from within the building brought it down in seconds, clearing the way for new developments. El Capitan, a massive granite monolith over 3,000 feet tall, is located in Yosemite National Park in Central California. A visitor accidentally caught on camera the moment a piece of rock fell from El Capitan, creating a cloud of dust and smoke along with a loud noise. Yosemite Valley experiences hundreds of rockfalls annually, which contribute to the stunning landscape of Yosemite Park. At the base of large mountains, people often mine stones and minerals for business purposes. However, this activity is fraught with dangers, as rockfalls and landslides can occur at any time. In one instance, a blue excavator was tapping on a rock as though trying to awaken it, and it did wake up. The rock tumbled down like a waterfall, and the excavator had to quickly move away. Meanwhile, a little orange excavator was working when suddenly the land above it slid down. It seemed to quickly try to escape the falling debris. Another scene shows an excavator taking a break with a small landslide occurring behind it, seemingly unaffected by the event. On December 14, 1963, South Los Angeles faced a significant crisis when the Baldwin Hills Dam experienced a catastrophic failure. Black and white footage captured from a helicopter documented the unfolding events, showing the flooding that ensued. This aerial coverage was groundbreaking for its time, setting a precedent for how breaking news stories are covered today. The incident began around 11.15 a.m. during a routine inspection, when a caretaker noticed water draining from pipes beneath the dam's membrane liner. Concerned, they notified an engineer who decided to lower the reservoir's water level as a precaution. Despite these efforts and the evacuation of approximately 1,600 downstream residents, a section of the dam collapsed at 3.38 p.m. that same day. Within an hour, the reservoir was nearly empty. The dam's location directly above an active fault line, a subsidiary of the nearby Newport Inglewood Fault, was a critical factor. The geological instability of the underlying strata, initially deemed manageable during planning, proved fatal. The dam's design included a compacted soil lining intended to prevent water from seeping into the foundation, but this was insufficient given the geological risks. The Baldwin Hills disaster had a profound impact on civil engineering engineering practices and remains a subject of study and reflection in the field. It underscored the importance of thorough geological assessments and informed decisions in infrastructure planning to prevent such tragedies in the future. The Kosciusko Bridge was a truss bridge spanning Newtown Creek in New York City. When it was built in the late 1930s, it was designed to handle about 10,000 vehicles daily, a reasonable number for that era. However, as the bridge became integrated into the interstate highway system, traffic increased drastically to an average of 180,000 vehicles per day. By 2017, after nearly 80 years of handling far more traffic than it was intended for, the state of New York decided it was time to replace the aging bridge.
During its demolition, watched by hundreds of spectators, over 900 charges were set off, bringing down 10 million kilograms of steel. On August 17, 2009, one of Russia's largest and most powerful hydroelectric plants suffered a catastrophic failure captured by state CCTV cameras. The disaster began with Turbine 2 experiencing a severe breakdown, flooding the machinery halls instantly. Simultaneously, power at the main control panel dropped to zero, causing a complete blackout in the area. In the video footage, workers can be seen urgently evacuating the building as water flooded the parking lot. With no electricity, they manually raised the gate to allow cars to leave. The accident was primarily caused by excessive vibrations in Turbine 2, which had gradually damaged its mountings over time, leading to the catastrophic failure. A subsequent investigation revealed that at the time of the incident, six nuts were missing from the bolts securing the turbine cover. 49 recovered bolts showed 41 fatigue-induced cracks. Tragically, many workers lost their lives, and nine out of 10 turbines were severely damaged or destroyed. The failure in August 2009 resulted in widespread power outages across Russia. Repairs were completed by 2014, five years after the incident, at a staggering cost exceeding 1 billion US dollars. The Hanford site is an old nuclear production facility in Washington state. It was constructed in 1943 as part of the Manhattan Project and produced plutonium for atomic bombs. The site spanned 500 square miles along the Columbia River and generated literal tons of radioactive waste and materials. Over time, this waste leaked into the surrounding land and water, leading to the site being shut down in the 1960s. One of the final structures to be demolished were the water towers, which were originally built for fire emergencies. On March 2, 2010, workers brought down the last tower. It's somewhat ironic, isn't it? They sprayed the water tower with water, even though they had already emptied these towers before tearing them down. Most hadn't been used in a long time. Removing these towers was part of a cleanup along the Columbia River. The NOAA was concerned that nuclear waste had contaminated the area. Although it wasn't a direct threat to people, the fish, wildlife, and their environments were seriously at risk. Located in Cleveland, Ohio, the I-90 Interbelt Bridge was a critical structure carrying Interstate 90 over the Cuyahoga River. By 2009, it became apparent that the aging bridge was under extreme stress and no longer fit to handle the heavy eight-lane traffic. Originally slated for renovation, these plans were abandoned once the structural issues were fully understood and demolition was chosen as the next step. In July 2014, a well-coordinated demolition involving 180 pounds of explosives placed on the bridge's foundations brought the entire structure crashing down with just the push of a button. The Himalayas, one of the largest mountain ranges in the world, spans several countries, with a significant portion in India. In the residential areas near these mountains, rockfalls are common due to geological shifts and weather conditions. Rocks of various sizes can be seen hurtling down from the mountains at high speeds. In one incident, a parking lot was struck by a violent landslide, with cars nearly buried under mounds of dirt and rocks. The area was engulfed in dust, but fortunately, no one was injured in the event. Jerusalem, one of the world's oldest and most historically significant cities, recently experienced an unexpected event. A sinkhole suddenly appeared in the parking lot of a hospital, swallowing several cars. The hospital captured video footage showing the ground collapsing under the vehicles, causing them to fall one by one into the sinkhole in a domino effect. The incident caused panic, prompting emergency crews to quickly respond. Specialized units were dispatched to help anyone who might have been trapped in their vehicles. Fortunately, there were no injuries reported. The Henry Lawrence Memorial Bridge in Kentucky, built in 1932, was the only road crossing over the Cumberland River in the state. 
In 2012, the nearby Egner's Ferry Bridge, also from the 1930s, was struck by a cargo vessel, causing its main pier to collapse and nearly resulting in disaster for four vehicles. This incident prompted concerns about the safety of the Henry Lawrence Bridge. By 2015, Kentucky officials declared the bridge obsolete and planned its demolition to make way for a new $128 million arch bridge. On April 11, 2018, a series of explosions demolished the Henry Lawrence Bridge, sending black smoke up and debris crashing into the Cumberland River. Whoa. Shortly after, cranes were deployed to remove the steel and rubble from the river, which was recycled as scrap metal. The Bronx, a borough renowned for its pivotal role in the birth of hip-hop culture in the 1970s, experienced a severe incident on the morning of December 13, 2023. A devastating fire broke out at around 3.30 a.m., engulfing multiple businesses and causing chaos as firefighters battled to control the blaze. The fire occurred in a commercial building in the Kingsbridge area, injuring one person and sweeping through various establishments. Massive flames tore through the building, leaving witnesses shocked and away by the harsh smell of smoke. According to eyewitnesses, the origin of the fire was traced back to the kitchen at the rear of Cold Cut City Deli. In a village at the foot of a mountain, a woman captured a video of part of the mountain collapsing. The sound could be heard even from a distance. It's incredible. Hundreds of cubic meters of rock and soil fell, making it look like the mountain lost half of its mass. The Jamestown Bridge in Rhode Island, completed in 1940 and stretching over two kilometers, was initially built at a cost of around $3 million, equivalent to $64 million today. By 1992, the bridge became obsolete due to its age and limited capacity. It was overshadowed by the newer and larger Jamestown Verrazano Bridge, constructed right beside it. The old bridge was closed and remained unused for the next 14 years. Finally, in 2006, the 335 meter long central span was demolished after the US. Coast Guard declared it a navigation hazard. The steel from the bridge was collected by barges for recycling, and the remaining concrete was repurposed to create artificial reefs at the mouth of Narragansett Bay. Guangdong Province, in southern China, is known for its economic dynamism and rich cultural heritage. Recently, a dramatic incident occurred there when the ground collapsed, creating a massive sinkhole. This sinkhole swallowed an entire complex and an adjacent three-story building. Fortunately, no residents were living in the structures at the time of the collapse, and no injuries were reported. This event highlights the sudden and unforeseen nature of such disasters. In the Skardu area of Pakistan, it's common to find dirt roads along steep cliffs, often without any railings, posing a constant risk of landslides and rockfalls. One instance involved a white car that was moving forward when it suddenly had to back up as soil, boulders, and dust started cascading down the cliff. This scenario illustrates how people in this region live with danger on a daily basis. Heading over to Saskatoon, Canada, we find the Saskatoon Traffic Bridge, the city's oldest bridge, which had served both vehicles and pedestrians for over a century. In 2007, the bridge was fitted with decorative lights, which unexpectedly revealed the bridge's safety risks. The lights would often come loose due to excessive shaking, prompting a thorough inspection of the bridge. This investigation led to its indefinite closure. After discovering significant corrosion throughout the structure, it was determined that the costs of maintaining the bridge were too high, making demolition the more practical choice. Whoa. Initially, some parts of the bridge were manually dismantled using heavy machinery, and then the remaining three spans were taken down with explosives. The landslide almost completely blocked the road, vehicles were stopped, and the passengers on a bus tried to escape before the landslide reached them. Fortunately, none of them were caught in the pile of dirt. 
China boasts a rich and varied natural landscape that includes towering mountains, deep gorges, lush forests, and vast grasslands. However, the country is currently experiencing relentless rainfall, causing rivers to swell dramatically and leading to widespread flooding. This natural disaster has resulted in the destruction of homes and buildings, leaving many areas submerged. Witnessing one's own home being destroyed in such a manner is a heart-wrenching experience. Water towers come in various shapes and sizes. Consider this old-fashioned one that finally reached the end of its lifespan. May 23, 2012 was its final day standing. Demolition crews equipped the tower with cables linked to two backhoes. A gentle tug was all it took to topple it. Goes this tower. Timber! Woo! Nice! Nice! It almost looks like a bug crawling across the ground at first, doesn't it? You'd think it wouldn't take much to bring down these old style water towers. This type, made of welded steel, has been popular for more than a hundred years. As technology advances, we'll likely see fewer of these around. Germany, the AFE Tower was a 38-story building that stood 381 feet or 116 meters tall. It was part of Johann Wolfgang Goethe University and housed the offices and seminar rooms for the social sciences and education departments until 2013. However, poor management led to various issues that made the tower unpopular. Designed to accommodate about 2,500 students, the university admitted many more, causing overcrowding. The seven elevators couldn't handle the high demand, often leading to waits of more than 15 minutes. Additionally, the campus was a hotspot for student protests because it could be easily sealed off, unlike other university buildings. This affected student life and drove many away. In 2013, the decision was made to relocate the university's departments and vacate the building. The move began in July 2013 and was completed by the end of January 2014. Authorities then approved the building's implosion. On February 2, 2014, around 10,000 people gathered to watch the demolition. With two loud bangs, the building came down, turning into a 100,000-pound pile of debris in less than 10 seconds. While demolishing buildings like this may seem like erasing history, it highlights the skill of detonation experts who can bring down structures with minimal collateral damage, making way for future developments. In a state in India, a large rock slide caused a traffic disruption. Earth and rocks fell violently onto the road. Some men, out of curiosity, approached to observe the scene. Fortunately, no one was hurt. On a trail around the mountain, a road construction project was underway. Suddenly, a landslide occurred, causing rocks and soil to collapse. Approximately 880,000 cubic meters of soil and rock fell down. Fortunately, a nearby excavator managed to move away in time when the landslide happened. Protor Rosa is located in the Sexton Mountains of Rotwand, Italy. Following prolonged heavy rains, rockfalls and landslides are frequently reported in the area. These landslides often start at the top of steep mountains, where gravity pulls soil and rocks downhill. As the debris moves, it accumulates and can grow larger by the time it reaches the base of the mountain. The speed of the landslide varies depending on the steepness of the slope. The Japan tsunami on March 11, 2011, also known as the Great East Japan Earthquake, was a catastrophic event that had major effects both locally and worldwide. The earthquake had a magnitude of 9.0, making it one of the strongest ever recorded. The footage was taken at Kuji Port in Iwat Prefecture and provided by the Kamaishi Port Office, which is part O asterisk F the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport, and Tourism.
It's quite frightening. In 2018, Nikiti, a picturesque village in Greece, was transformed into a disaster zone by a sudden flood. The powerful surge of water swept cars away, carrying them into the sea. This shocking event was recorded by locals and tourists who found themselves stranded in the area, capturing the terrifying scenes on camera. Process. Artishchevo, Russia, is a significant town in the Saratov Oblast, located about 300 kilometers southeast of Moscow. It is home to the Arty Air Base, where military personnel train using the L-410 Turbolet, a twin-engine short-range transport aircraft developed by the Czech Republic. On August 24, 2006, a pilot in training was coming in for a landing at the airbase. The area around the landing strip is sparsely populated with few structures, which typically allows pilots to focus solely on their landing. However, this particular pilot discovered that landing the aircraft was more challenging than his peers had suggested. It's difficult to notice, but the front gear of the plane collapses after the last bounce, causing the nose of the plane to skid across the ground and eventually bring it to a stop. This bouncing effect is known as porpoising, named after the way dolphins jump in and out of the water. Typically, when landing, it's common for a plane to bounce on the runway, float, or land with the nose gear first. However, problems arise when the nose wheel and main gear touch down simultaneously, as they did in this case. Normally, planes land on their rear wheels first, allowing the nose to touch down gradually. This technique ensures the plane lands close to its center of gravity, preventing it from pitching out of control, which unfortunately happened in this scenario. Hurricane Ian caused extensive damage in Cuba and southern Florida in late September 2022. As a Category 4 hurricane, it hit Lee County with winds of over 150 miles per hour, making it the fifth strongest hurricane to impact the United States as of 2023. It was also the most severe storm to strike Florida since Hurricane Michael in 2018. Ian was relentless, destroying cars, homes, and businesses indiscriminately. The aftermath was captured in countless hours of video and thousands of photographs, but it was the real-time footage recorded during the storm that truly illustrated the intensity of the situation. Imagine seeing the roads you use daily submerged underwater. Video from a balcony captured the ocean overflowing the beach, flooding the streets of Fort Myers, Florida, one of the area's hardest hit by the storm. The barrier islands in Lee County sustained severe damage. Public safety officials described these areas as decimated and unrecognizable. Rough estimates suggest that Hurricane Ian caused between $50 and $65 billion in insured damages. However, that figure only covers insured losses. The total, including uninsured damage, could reach up to $100 billion. This estimate also accounts for the loss of tourism revenue, a crucial part of South Florida's economy. Lightning strikes are common, but catching them on camera up close is quite rare. They happen suddenly and disappear just as quickly. Typically, only security cameras, which are always recording and happen to be aimed in the right direction, manage to capture these moments. For instance, in 2014, cameras at a state park in New York recorded a lightning bolt striking a tree. The footage shows a bright flash, followed by the top half of the tree tumbling down, with some of the bark even being stripped off. More recently, in 2019, a doorbell camera caught a lightning strike that set a house on fire. In the 2019 incident, although the video doesn't show the fire, firefighters arrived quickly and managed to contain the blaze. Fortunately, no one inside the house was injured. 
The video of this event was released by the Rosenberg Fire Department to serve as a reminder to always stay alert during lightning storms. The Rocheport Bridge, also known as the Missouri River Bridge, was a significant structure near Rocheport, Missouri that stood for 63 years. At its peak, it supported 12.5 million vehicles annually, including 3.6 million heavy trucks. Over time, the bridge deteriorated and was deemed in poor condition. In response, Missouri constructed a new bridge, which opened in 2023. The next step involved demolishing the old bridge to clear space for a new eastbound bridge. On September 10, 2023, the old Rocheport Port Bridge was demolished using explosives in a dramatic fashion. Let's see that again from another angle. The old Rocheport Bridge, constructed in 1960 and rehabilitated in 1994, was a four-lane bridge facilitating east and westbound traffic over the Missouri River. As of 2024, plans are in place to temporarily use the new westbound bridge for both directions of traffic until the construction of the new eastbound bridge is completed. If all goes as scheduled, the new eastbound bridge is expected to be operational by December 2024. The Kenneth Conda International Airport is the biggest airport in Zambia, Africa. Now, it has two terminals, one for domestic flights and another for international flights. But this wasn't always the case. Before the second terminal was built in 2021, all flights shared just one terminal, which led to a lot of air traffic and a higher chance of accidents. For instance, on December 10, 2007, a South African Airways plane landed and started taxiing to the runway, and it ended up being quite a bumpy ride. Yeah, knocked over a container. Initially, things didn't seem too bad, but the wing of the Boeing 737 ended up with significant damage. It's unclear who was to blame. The pilot might have steered too far to the left, or perhaps a transport truck was left in an improper spot. Fortunately, no one was inside or near the truck when it tipped over. On February 6, 2023, a powerful 7.8 magnitude earthquake hit central Turkey and northern Syria, causing severe damage, especially in Antakya, the capital of Hatay province. Reports indicate that 70% of the homes and more than 6,000 buildings collapsed, with an additional 3,700 buildings needing to be demolished. The city was left in ruins. Just as recovery efforts were underway, another earthquake, this one measuring 6.3 in magnitude, struck the area along the Syrian border on February 20th. A local who was parked at a gas station captured the moment the second earthquake hit on their dash cam. Reporters on the ground noted that the tremors from the earthquake damaged several buildings and sent dust plumes into the night sky. The shaking was felt as far away as Egypt and Lebanon. In the aftermath, rescue workers hurried to assist people crowded in the streets, many of whom were living in temporary tents because their homes had been destroyed by the earlier earthquake. Between February 6th and 20th, several smaller aftershocks occurred, but none as powerful as the initial quake. The February 6th earthquake was the strongest to hit Turkey since 1939. Oil rigs are incredible examples of engineering in our oceans. These huge platforms, which are partly submerged, can be placed in any ocean location and drill thousands of feet below the surface to find oil. To get to their operational spots, these large floating platforms are towed by tugboats. In 2017, a massive oil rig named Transocean Winter was being towed from Scavenger, Norway, to Valletta, Malta. It was a long trip, taking them through rough seas, a common risk they were prepared for. 
However, they encountered unexpectedly severe weather west of the Hebrides. The strong winds impacted the Transocean winter, causing the tug to lose control over its direction and speed. The winds were so powerful that they pushed the platform backward for more than 24 hours. Eventually, the tow lines weakened, and the rig was left to the mercy of the wind and tide, ending up on the rocky shores of the Outer Hebrides. Fortunately, the rig wasn't completely damaged. It was soon recovered and repaired. However, the repairs and the downtime cost the company at least 38 million British pounds. Early March 2022 was a difficult time for northern Texas, as the area faced hailstorms, tornadoes, strong winds, and even a blizzard. Jacksboro, a small city, was particularly affected. On March 21st, a tornado hit near Jacksboro, one of 10 spawned by the storm system. This tornado quickly escalated to an EF3 category, with winds reaching 140 to 150 miles per hour. Security footage from the Jacksboro Independent School District captured the moment the tornado struck. In one video from a school hallway, the lights flicker just before the ceiling is ripped open, leaving the camera pointing up at the ductwork and wires. Another clip shows the school gymnasium wall being blown down, with insulation scattering everywhere, making it look like the tornado was inside the gym. A similar situation occurred in another gym where walls fell, exposing everything to the weather as the tornado moved through. Fortunately, despite the extensive damage, there were no injuries or fatalities. The tornado affected both the elementary and high school, which is why there were different gym scenes in the footage. Classes were canceled for a week to allow repair crews to start fixing the damage, and when students returned, repairs were still ongoing. Everyone was just relieved that no one was hurt during this intense storm. In late September 2018, the Great Lakes region experienced a two-day tornado outbreak, with 37 tornadoes affecting both the U.S. and Canada, causing approximately $295 million in damages, predominantly in the U.S. However, Ontario and Quebec also faced severe rain and windstorms, including some tornadoes. In Quebec, strong winds caused massive power outages, affecting thousands. On September 22, CCTV footage from a Quebec storefront showed the intensity of the storm from two angles. The first camera, positioned in a parking lot, captured debris being hurled towards cars as the wind intensified and the rain obscured the camera's view, eventually breaking it. The scene was almost surreal due to the speed of the wind. The footage then switched to show two people on a porch clinging on as the storm raged around them, shielding themselves from flying debris. When the worst passed, they were visibly shocked by the severity of the storm that had transformed a calm day into a terrifying event in just moments. According to Hydro Quebec, by 9 p.m. on September 21st, around 129,000 homes were without power. Over 60 repair teams were deployed to address the damage, and officials throughout the province issued high wind warnings. The small town of Harlan, Indiana, located about 30 minutes outside of Fort Wayne, faced a severe test in early 2023. With a population of around 1,600, the community was challenged by severe weather systems, including several tornadoes that ravaged the South and Midwest. On March 31st, an incident involving an Allen County deputy highlighted the severity of these storms. Initially driving through a typical rainstorm, the situation quickly escalated into an EF2 tornado. A video captured from the deputy's cruiser shows initially calm stormy conditions. However, as the deputy drove down a dark road, the wind intensified and debris started flying around, illuminated briefly by the cruiser's headlights. Within seconds, visibility dropped to zero, forcing the officer to pull over and wait out the storm. Although it was difficult to distinguish the road from the grass, the storm passed almost as quickly as it arrived. Fortunately, the wind was not strong enough to lift the cruiser. While the vehicle was undamaged, the tornado still wreaked havoc nearby, damaging several properties, including Amish barns and uprooting many trees. This incident was a stark reminder of the unexpected challenges that law enforcement officers may face. Between March 2nd and 3rd, 2020, Tennessee experienced a series of destructive tornadoes. Over the night, 10 tornadoes were confirmed, changing the landscape dramatically by morning. The most severe was an EF3 tornado that started west of Nashville at about 12.32 a.m., traveling a 60-mile path through the city and ending in Smith County. Street cameras captured the intense moment of the storm at an empty intersection. Initially, everything seemed normal until a car passed through, causing streetlights to swing and the camera to shake. 
Building's power flickered, another car rushed through, and then chaos erupted. The light swung wildly, creating a strobe effect, then snapped and fell, sparking and causing power lines to explode. The storm reduced visibility so much that even the white crosswalk lines became nearly invisible. The National Weather Service reported that this storm was 1,600 yards wide with winds reaching up to 165 miles per hour. It was the first tornado to hit downtown Nashville since February 2000 and had the longest path recorded in Tennessee. The damage was estimated at around $1.5 billion, making it one of the costliest tornadoes in U.S. history. The December 26, 2004 earthquake off the coast of northern Sumatra ranks as one of the most devastating natural disasters in recorded history. It registered between 9.1 and 9.3 on the Richter scale, making it one of the strongest earthquakes ever documented. The epicenter was located off the west coast of northern Sumatra, Indonesia, at a relatively shallow depth of about 30 kilometers below the ocean floor. This powerful earthquake triggered a massive tsunami that affected numerous countries around the Indian Ocean, leading to extensive devastation and a significant loss of life. Indonesia, Sri Lanka, India, and Thailand were among the hardest hit nations, but the Maldives, Malaysia, Myanmar, Somalia, and other countries in the Indian Ocean region also suffered considerable impacts. Millions of people were left homeless, and the damage to both infrastructure and economies was colossal. The 2004 tsunami also prompted major advancements in tsunami warning systems and disaster preparedness strategies worldwide, particularly in the Indian Ocean region. The Ramid Valley Bridge in Ludenscheid, Germany, was built between 1965 and 1968 and played a crucial role in the motorway network, significantly boosting the local and regional economies by improving accessibility and reducing travel times. After serving the community for over five decades, the bridge was closed for safety reasons for 17 months prior to its demolition, reflecting concerns about its structural integrity and suitability for modern traffic demands. 
As infrastructure ages, it often requires increased maintenance, and its functionality and reliability can diminish. Approximately 150 kilograms of explosives were used to demolish the bridge, which fell into a specially prepared drop bed, a technique used to minimize environmental impact and control debris. The successful demolition drew applause, indicating its importance to the local community and likely providing relief that a potentially unsafe structure was safely dismantled. Hurricane Andrew was one of the most devastating hurricanes in U.S. history, striking South Florida and Louisiana in August 1992, with particularly severe effects in Miami-Dade County, Florida. Archival footage from 1992 captures the extensive damage and destruction left by Hurricane Andrew in South Florida. The hurricane was extraordinarily destructive, flattening entire neighborhoods, uprooting trees, and displacing thousands of people. It damaged over 63,500 homes and completely destroyed more than 25,000, leaving around 175,000 people homeless. At the time, Hurricane Andrew was the costliest natural disaster in U.S. history, inflicting an estimated $26.5 billion in damages. This record was later surpassed by Hurricanes Katrina and Ike. The savannah Sabula Bridge, which connected Savannah, Illinois, and Sabula, Iowa, across the Mississippi River, was imploded as part of a project to replace the old structure with a new one. Built in 1932, the Truss Bridge was known for its unique design and important role in regional transportation. However, it was considered narrow and outdated by modern standards, raising concerns about its ability to handle current traffic volumes and vehicle sizes. aging bridge required increasing maintenance, and safety became a major issue, leading to the decision to replace it. In who felt like they were in a scene from the movie Titanic. However, unlike the movie, this disaster was not caused by bad weather or mechanical failure, but by a chain of human mistakes. The Concordia was on a seven-day cruise from Civitavecchia to Savona in Italy, but veered off its planned course to pass close to the island of Giglio. The ship's captain was attempting a sail pass salute, which led him to steer the ship dangerously close to the island, resulting in the ship striking a sharp reef. This collision tore a 230-foot-long hole in the side of the ship, letting seawater rush in. Additionally, a mishap with the anchor caused the ship to tilt dramatically, making the situation worse. This entirely preventable tragedy resulted in the deaths of 32 people, left many seriously injured, and led to the captain receiving a 16-year prison sentence. The captain claimed he was merely saluting fellow mariners and providing passengers with a scenic view. Although prosecutors argued he was trying to impress a much younger Moldovan dancer he was involved with, whether that's true or not, many survivors of this ordeal are likely hesitant ever to board a cruise ship again. In the early 2000s in Miami, there was a shocking boat crash that left everyone stunned. One Sunday afternoon, a group of friends were zipping around in a speedboat while a nearby luxury yacht was hosting a big party. The speedboat's captain, eager to show off the boat's speed, was unaware of the impending danger. Meanwhile, the yacht guests were having a great time, enjoying what Miami had to offer. Suddenly, the two boats were heading directly towards each other. The party atmosphere on the yacht distracted its captain, who didn't notice the approaching speedboat until it was too late to avoid a collision. 
In a last-ditch effort, the speedboat's captain tried to swerve, but it was futile. The collision resulted in a loud crash, a splash of water, and debris flying around. Screams and shouts came from both boats as everyone tried to stay calm. There were rumors that the yacht was hosting a party for some individuals involved in illegal activities, specifically dealing with cocaine. It's definitely not the type of people you'd want to accidentally run into. Fortunately, the crash didn't cause serious injuries, but it did significantly damage both boats. The speedboat's front was crushed, and the yacht's window shattered. The speedboat's owner had a lot to answer for. The sinking of fishing trawlers is a tragically common occurrence that often results in loss of life, either due to unprepared crews or sudden accidents. The ocean, unforgiving and formidable, has claimed many lives over the years across different regions. The crew of the fishing boat Oceanway, however, counts among the fortunate. Their boat sinking in 2017 was captured on video, but luckily, they were rescued shortly after entering the water. This incident took place off the Shetland Islands when the crew realized their vessel was flooding. They immediately called for help, prompting a response from a Lairwick lifeboat and a Coast Guard helicopter. As the rescuers approached, the fishermen were forced to jump into the icy sea. Within a minute of their escape, the ocean way sank. The rescue conditions were challenging due to severe weather, making it hard to maneuver the lifeboat close to the fishermen. Thankfully, all five crew members were safely rescued from the sea, albeit cold from their unexpected dip. Every shipwreck has its own story, some resulting from preventable circumstances, others from unexpected events. The Moro Castle, a luxury cruise ship from the 1930s, is known for a particularly tragic incident. It regularly traveled between New York City and Havana, Cuba, and was popular among tourists. In September 1934, during its return trip to New York City from Havana, a fire broke out in the ship's library and quickly spread throughout the vessel off the coast of New Jersey. The fire was exacerbated by poor weather, an unprepared crew, and the ship's design, which included highly flammable materials in its interior. This disaster claimed the lives of more than 137 of the 558 passengers and 240 crew members aboard. Only 12 lifeboats, which could carry 408 people, were launched. The catastrophic fire on the Moro Castle had significant repercussions for maritime travel, leading to major improvements in shipboard fire safety standards, including the use of fire-resistant materials, automatic fire doors, and comprehensive shipwide fire alarms. It also prompted increased emphasis on fire drills and lifeboat procedures. This 2019 footage from Kieran, Australia, captures a multi-million dollar luxury yacht named Modi slamming into a dock while terrified onlookers watch. The 45.6 meter yacht lost control due to a mechanical fault that caused one of its engines to jam at full throttle. Crew members were seen urgently signaling with their hands at the front of the yacht, warning people to move away. Others quickly dropped the anchor to minimize the impact. The crew was commended for their quick actions, which resulted in only minor damage to other boats in the harbor. As the yacht approached, patrons at the Prawn Star, a floating restaurant formerly a trawler, watched in alarm. Despite the close call, no one at the restaurant, which was packed with 60 diners, was injured. The crash forced the Prawn Star to shut down temporarily because the yacht had damaged the marina's docking area. Fortunately, the incident didn't cause any environmental harm, as there were no hazardous spills from the Modi. The ferry Kaidan crashed into a pier in Santo Domingo while it was docking, causing major damage to both the ship and the pier. Reports indicate that the ferry had just reached Santo Domingo and was securing itself and lowering its ramp when a current pushed it against the dock. The Kaidan was damaged, but nobody was hurt. The company's owner stated that the ship didn't have any holes below water and only the ramp was broken. According to the Port Administration, the crash happened because a cable attached to the dock snapped, causing some containers to shift and damage the dock's gate and other property. The situation is now under control, and operations at the port and with Caribbean ferries are back to normal. Authorities are investigating what happened. There was no pollution or disruption to nearby traffic. The Kaidan operates regularly between Santo Domingo and San Juan, Puerto Rico. The ship is 192 meters long, 27 meters wide at its widest, and has a maximum diving depth of 5.4 meters. It weighs 6,987 tons and has a total tonnage of 29,991. Ferries del Caribe manages the ferry's operations. 
thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated with our latest videos.